Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. I am your host, Chris Brown, and I am pleased and honored to have the founder of Save Nose Creek, a group that has relatively been uh, just introduced into the lexicon of Calgary society, and that is Andrew Ewell. Andrew, thank you so much for being here. I'm looking forward to talking to you about the uh, organization, the creek, and the future and even politics a little bit here. Thank you so much for being on the show. No, thanks for having me. And I'm I'm excited to talk about the creek. I've never never thought I'd be so excited about a body of water in my life. Here we are. Here we are talking about Nose Creek. So for those who don't know, for those who might be listening to this a little bit outside of Calgary, and even for people in Calgary who don't really know where Nose Creek is, because originally when you when I heard about this project, I thought it was Nose Hill and it was just a creek in Nose Hill, but it's not. So explain what Nose Creek is to my audience and also to the people of Calgary who might not know about what the area is. For sure. And, and yeah, it's, it's not a well-known, like not much, um, there's not many people in Calgary that know about Nose Creek. And that's, that's something we're also trying to change and something that I didn't know about really until I started investigating it. Um, I've lived beside this creek um, for about 13 years now in, in Coventry Hills. And, and it's until I started digging, I didn't know much about it. And so Nose Creek runs from about uh, just uh, a bit uh, west of, of Crossfield down through Airdrie, um, down through Balzac and into Calgary North and goes all the way down through Calgary um, to the Bow River. Um, so it's, 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 a, it's a, very, a, a very important um, piece of, 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 of water or shed that, that not too many people know about. And, and I'm, I'm really trying to change that. Um, there, there was a, a, a historical society um, that used to talk about Nose Creek all the time, but they're, they're kind of defunct now. And, and so it's really trying to get people caught up on the history of, of Nose, Nose, Tree, Nose Creek right now. And um, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm really pumped about it. It's, it's a, uh, uh, I, yeah, I, <laughs> I, I won't. I, 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 there's, there's just so much that, that I'm learning over, like, it's only been about a month that we've been uh, uh, an organization and I'm just like, I, I just want to explode with information right now. So Which I'll we're going it. to. And so for those who don't know where Coventry Hills is in Calgary, it's in the Northeast section. It's, uh, it's pretty much on, it borders uh, the deer, not the deer foot. Uh, yeah, it is the deer foot uh, and uh, Stony Trail, which is the ring road around uh, uh, the uh, city. But you, Coventry Hills, like I said, is in the Northeast. I, I got to ask the first question, uh, the second question now, because that was the first question beforehand. But how did Save Nose Creek come about? Because you are relatively new to this. We're going to talk about the history of it that you learned about later on. But how did you come about learning about the potential development of this area that could potentially back onto the creek, which could af effectively destroy the creek's inhabitants? Yeah, it's uh, it's been a, an interesting journey that that started with um, a neighbor dropping off a flyer um, at, at our house. Um, there, just just next to us, there's a there's a, a green space um, that the the signs in this green space have always said um, a future uh, bus corridor. Um, so anybody who's who's been in this area for long periods of time those those signs have been here since the 90s um, and so the these residents have heard rumblings that since stony trail they've they've started the overpass it's 11th street um, and stony trail overpass um, just behind coventry hills uh, there's been rumblings that hey maybe we connect that as an actual road and not just a bus only corridor and so our neighbors were a little concerned about that in that they they've always only ever seen these signs that said this could only be bus access and not, not road access. And so it got me thinking um, what, if they were to build a road uh, to that, that overpass, what are, what are we connecting to? Um, what, what would that road connect to? And it kind of got me 
down into the valley of, of Nose Creek and, and really investigating what the area structure plan has in store for that area. Um, and that area structure plan, uh, which was approved in 2005, um, was only ever to be um, light industrial warehousing um, uh, buildings. And, but that was, that was 2005 and it's a large swath of area that this area structure plan covers. It goes from Coventry Hills, border of Coventry Hills and Harvest Hills all that's that would be the the western border the eastern border is barlow trail all the way across deerfoot um, the northern border is stony trail and the southern border is airport trail so it is a huge area structure plan that um, was decided 17 years ago by um, a, a council that uh, i think the only council member that's still here is um, Andre Chabot, and he's already left and come back once. So that was a long time ago. And so what we're trying to do, um, like this, this journey, we wanted to kind of like reopen that area structure plan. And like, it, it has been 17 years. Can we make changes? Is there, is there anything we can do um, to, to influence um, um, the, the developments that are going on in the Valley? And there's a lot of developments um, that I, I feel like it is the urgency is amplified um, right now to, to get involved because there is there is four major projects going on in that valley separate from each other um, and so and 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 I just as as community residents we just kind of want a voice uh, to be involved in those projects and those projects um, I'll list off are 128th Avenue um, it's a road that connects to that new new um, overpass over over Stony Trail and it goes through the valley into the industrial areas. So that's project number one. Project number two is the Country Hills widening project. Um, it uh, like it, it is it is uh, very important that if like now is when they're finally up like working on upgrading Country Hills Boulevard. Let's get some let's get some some voices and and really protect the creek while we're, while we're upgrading Country Hills Boulevard. Uh, the third project is like just completing the area structure plan as, as that blueprint kind of like, it's now that we're seeing those warehouses come over the valley and start entering the valley, uh, which is why I, I believe I'm getting so much momentum with, with this group is because people can kindly finally see the, the, the warehouses kind of coming over the valley. And then the, the fourth project that's going on right now um, is a feasibility study. Uh, Airdrie uh, City Council is doing a feasibility study um, for a um, mode bike highway from, from Airdrie to Calgary. And so all these projects are kind of independent of each other, but it's like they all surround Nose Creek and, and um, as, as advocacy group, as an advocacy group, we want to make sure that the, the creek has a voice in all these these developments. So how long have you been living in Coventry Hills? Because uh, for the viewers and listeners, I, I got a tour of uh, Nose Creek uh, the day before recording this. So last Wednesday, I got a tour of Nose Creek. And then Thursday, we recorded this is coming out the Thursday uh, after we've recorded this. How long have you lived in Coventry Hills near Nose Creek? Uh, near, so I've lived in Coventry Hills for 13 years. We just actually moved closer to Nose Creek um, uh, uh, a year ago, two, a year and a half ago. Um, we moved into this this house, which which also like gave me more like closer eyes on the creek. Um, now that we moved closer to it, like we love Coventry Hills. It's a great family community, uh, which is why we stayed in Coventry Hills. Um, like all of our kids have friends in the neighborhood and it's, it's a great place to, to, to raise your kids. Um, and so uh, being closer to the Creek really put my eyes on it. Um, um, and really, it really, um, drew me into, to what is going on down there. Um, so that, you know, maybe I can, I can have a voice in it. And as you said in your, uh, uh speech a little bit beforehand about, uh, this, rezoning of uh, Nose Creek area to uh, Greenland to uh, light industrial 
didn't happen overnight. This has been a long time coming, almost 13, almost uh, 13, uh, 17 years ago, as you said. Um, why did, you said it wasn't until the flyer came out that you sort of started getting a little bit more interested in the project. Um, was it well known that this uh, area was being converted into a light industrial area as you talk to your neighbors, as you talk to uh, uh, the Coventry Hills uh, Community Association here in Calgary? Are people saying, yeah, we've known about it, we just didn't care that it was going to be converted? Or are people shocked like you were when you found out these things were happening and had already passed? Right. And I, I so I guess... Um... It's been it's been since 2005. I mean, like you look you look at the articles that were written back then about this um, about this development, and there was really nobody in favor of it. Um, the the uh, community association president at the time was Jyoti Gondek, and um, she voiced her um, uh, objections to not not um, being the residents not being heard in all this process. That was back in 2005. When you look at the vote vote for this um, um, this area, the area councillor Helen uh, Larocque uh, voted against it. The, she was the area councillor um, advocating that we don't do this. Um, Dave Brancagne, the mayor, also uh, voted against this. Um, the administration was also uh, against the, the the project at the time as well, and so the. The, the fact that this went through at the time was kind of shocking. Um, and, and ever since the, the com community association in, in Northern Hills has been pushing back on this, this um, with, with very little um, success, but, um, and, and, and very little acknowledgement. Um, there's, there was a, a land use designation change in 2020 uh, and in the documentation, it said that there's no um, community association uh, associated with this area, uh, and there was no engagement. Um, and it and and we get surprised by these things because we're not being involved. We get um, sideswiped that that they're they're changing it to to commercial um, areas, and because nobody's involving the adjacent community. And there's actually one just today, um, as we're recording this today. There was another land uh, use designation or um, redesignation that was put through, and we only found out about it this weekend. Um, and it went to planning commission today. Um, so the last week, we've been frantically trying to get um, a counselor or or somebody to to speak uh, on behalf of us that that we want um, more protections for the creek. Um, but but again, we were sideswiped. It was like I was just doing some scouting in the district area, uh, just to look at the creek, and then I saw this this sign up, and I, I looked at it, and, and comments had to be in by April twenty twenty second. But it's like on this back road that nobody drives. So how how are we supposed to know that any like these things are happening um, when we're not being told? And and so today we were we, I was watching the. Um, uh, the planning commission and and they did address that we we've, we've been trying to reach out to them they did address the northern hills wrote a letter um and they're going to forward it on to the the council when this goes to council um but but it's it like at the planning commission level like we're not we're not being involved because their their comment was well northern hills is not in the stony industrial area well according to the federation of communities if you look at the map we are like like if <laughs> like Northern Hills community goes straight to um, Deerfoot Trail. And maybe that's a miscommunication between those two organizations, but uh, like we, we are as involved in the Valley uh, as a community um, as any of the developers down there. So like we do deserve a voice in, in what's going on down in this Valley. Some people might push back uh, that say that, well, we need to grow. We're a growing population. We're a growing uh, community. And we don't have a lot of land. There's perfectly good green space in your area. And some listeners and some viewers might think, well, you're just upset because it's in your backyard. You moved here two years ago. 
And it's in your backyard where these new proposed light industrial commercial use is coming in. And if this was happening in the Southeast, you wouldn't be upset if a park was getting, or an air, a green area was getting destroyed there. What do you say to those people who are, who would say, it's just because it's in your backyard, the nimbyism of the whole uh, argument. Yeah, and, and, and what, what, I, what I've uh, been trying to say is that um, it's not really, uh, you know, not in my backyard, it's, it's, it's what's in my backyard. I mean, there, the, the, there's tons of different development plots. We, we have no idea what, it, what's, what could go up there. Like we could have just like a sea of gray warehouses that the, the fact that we're not being um, included in these discussions, we just, have, we just don't know. Like, like we can't, we can't be nimbyism if we just don't know what it is we're, we're against. And, um, and I guess, I guess like, like ultimately when, when I started this journey, yeah, maybe it was it, like, it was just about um, maybe we get some, some infrastructure uh, improvements, but, but the more I investigated this, this Creek and the more I found out about its history, it's it, like the, the more I was convinced that this isn't just um, a community you know, advocating for green space, uh, which we, we definitely need, like, uh, like Northern Hills doesn't have a, a, a green space like, like many other communities like Nose Hill, Fish Creek, Weasel Head, like we, we don't have that walk, walkable green space that, that most, most communities have. And, and that's, that's part of it. But the more I dug into it, the more I'm very convinced that the province or, or the feds need to step in. This is the, the history that is in this valley is, is very important to our city, to our First Nations. Um, and I, I feel like we're, we're, um, we're gonna lose some very, very important artifacts um, as, as development continues to move forward. So let's talk about what you've learned over the last month and a half since you started this journey. And as we talked about yesterday uh, on our walk, uh, this has spawned into a bigger thing than you probably thought of when you first started out. What have you learned about Nose Creek? Because the story you told me yesterday, and you'll be able to uh, give it more color than I can, but this creek was a instrumental part of uh, the Old West. It was part of uh, our heritage of Indigenous First Nations communities, the Sikas, the Blackfoot Confederacy. This creek actually has a lot more history than just a body of water. And can you explain what that history is? Absolutely. So it's funny. I, I, so I got this book. It is 100 years of Nose Creek Valley history. Um, and I mentioned the, the Nose Creek Historical Society before. Um, they, the, like, this is a thick book of, of, of Nose Creek history. And, um, so Nose Creek uh, Historical Society um, um, kind of rolled up into, there's a, there's a Nose Creek Museum now in Airdrie. Um, so, and, but since, since that roll up, um, a lot of, a lot of uh, the society has just kind of become defunct. Um, but, but reading this book, which I got in Baltimore, like apparently, like they, I couldn't find a, a, a copy here in Calgary. I went to Amazon, Amazon sent me a copy from Baltimore, um, which was crazy in itself that I find our history in Baltimore. Um, and I guess like there's only one copy of this in the, the, the city of Cal Calgary's library. Um, and it's in like the central library. It's like, we need more of these, like this is our history. Um, but what I, what I was learning was um, the, the Nose Creek was an essential landmark in, in both like ancient First Nations um, 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 traveling, like the, the Old North Road or the, the Old North Trail uh, went through Calgary, like, and the Old North Trail was how First Nations went from Alaska all the way down to Mexico. Um, and even like Montana does a better job than Calgary does of telling the Old North Trail story um, with markers through Montana. Um, we have a marker, I, I think it's on some um, road, like, cause we paved over our, our North Trail. Um, so there's like some plaque somewhere in Calgary, but 
but this like the 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 Nose Creek was an essential part of getting down to the Bow River because it's the landmark that helped to guide you to the Bow River, and and so that old North Trail then turned into um, when when settlers arrived they turned it into the um, Calgary to Edmonton wagon trail. And uh, like, that's insane. Um, there's like, you look at some of these old maps of, uh, and no, Nose Creek is like an essential landmark that, that once you hit Nose Creek, it takes you right into Fort Calgary. Um, and so, so that history in itself um, really got me thinking um, and Started, started, started digging into the um, area structure plan in, in the northeast here, and and sure enough, there's there's areas of interest um, throughout the the valley of teepee rings and buffalo um, kill sites and um, all sorts of uh, First Nations ancient artifacts through this valley that. Um, and in some cases, it sounds like we've destroyed them through um, creation of the Stony, Tra um, Stony Trail and Airport Trail. Um, back in 2004, um, there was an article about um, Blaine Thorson was a, um, he was a, 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 a farmer um, in the area of Stony Trail who was trying to tell Calgary that there are artifacts and he knew where they were. And uh, we, we're actually talking to him um, now and he's gonna take us on a tour of where he, he knows where some, some artifacts are. Um, and, uh, and there's still like, we, we continue to just push progress here in Calgary and kind of uh, muck up some of our history. And so in that 2004 article, um, he was just trying to tell the, the story that, hey, that there's, there's artifacts down here. In that article, it was Chief Strader um, Crowfoot of the Siksika Nation who was advocating, hey, um, uh, we'd like to work with the city and make this area a park and indigenous center, uh, information center. Um, and and I, I don't see any, any, any progress of making that park or that, that interpretive center um, that, that uh, the First Nations were, were asking for back then. So we're, we are, um, we have connected with, um, with the Siksika Nation. We're gonna try and get them out uh, for a tour um, to, to continue that conversation because I think we, we, we owe it to them to, to continue it and, and has see, there, see where that goes. Has there been any archeological digs in the area or any uh, historian go out? You talk about the gentleman that uh, knows where all the locations are, that's great. But has someone actually gone out and done a survey, whether it be from the city, whether it be from a uh, historical society? Do you have any records of someone actually trying to find some of these historical markers, with not just putting them on a map? Because uh, I remember when we were doing the tour, you showed me a map and certain locations on this map had uh, markers of where things happened, whether it be with First Nations communities or with uh, the settlers uh, using it as a road. Is there actual proof? And I and I know that sounds like a weird question. It's just someone's someone's story is a story, right? Until you actually have proof. So has there been proof of here's where it actually is? So in the 1980s, when they were building a pipeline, um, <laughs> of course, <laughs> <laughs> just north. So it's just north of uh, Stony, what is Stony Trail now? Um, not very far north of Stony Trail. Um, there, there is, um, if you Google the um, Balzac archeological site, uh, you will find it. Um, it. It is a provincial heritage site um, of a bison, pro a prehistoric bison processing facility. Um, because all of these bluffs um, throughout the valley um, were used to, um, uh, as buffalo jumps and and uh, and so that's where they would process these their kills and um, and and that's like if you, you look at it on Google Maps and it's just a field. Uh, but when they, they did excavate it in the eighties and they did do um, um, and it is a protect I, I believe a protected heritage site with with the province. But like that's just north of Stony Trail. Like like they're not really protecting it like <laughs> in, in any way or honoring it in any way. It's just this 
this bend in the in the creek where 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 it is. So that's that is a little frustrating. But but within the valley, like in the city limits, like there there's just kind of dotted um, um, dotted areas of interest, um, significant um, significant interest. Um, I don't know exactly what those dots mean. I don't I don't know that they've been fully um, excavated the way that the the Balzac site was, but that there's there's dots on a map that tell me that there's history down there. One of the big ones that I saw while I was doing the tour with yourself was the bison, uh, uh, I, I forget the name of it, but uh, the rubbing stone, as I, I so eloquently will call it now, but you know the exact name because this is an item, while it's seen better days with its graffiti and we would show a photo of it now, but due to some of the very graphic language on the US stone, it we will not, um, there is, that stone, you told me a story about it. And to me, it seems such like an easy situation where I would go, okay, let's put this as a historical marker because if if bison came through here and this was used as an area for people to kill bison and then take it back to their uh, area in Balzac, then why wouldn't you try to preserve that history? Because we always try to preserve history in this country, even good, bad, or indifferent. But it seems like such a simple thing that you can save that's such an instru instru instrumental part of our history. Yeah. Well, yeah, so the glacial erratic. Um, there you go. I, I knew I was going to get the name wrong, so I wasn't even going to try. I was going to say, like, glacier melting bison rub. So that's just, yeah. Anyway, go ahead, Andrew. Yeah. So um, it doesn't really have a name, um, mostly because uh, like you, you have split rock as a uh, as an example off of the West Nose Creek. That's that's well known because it's fancy because it's split in two and um, and pe people love it. Um, ours is, is graffitied because there's like there's no care or no like ownership of this park yet. Like we, we don't own this park. Um, it's it's very difficult to access um, and and um, and so it's it's hard to have that that ownership of something when it's hard to access. Um, but yeah, it's it's a it's a glacial erratic. It is definitely a buffalo rubbing stone. Um, that there's there's one in, there's one in Panorama that we call the buffalo rubbing stone. This one is definitely a buffalo rubbing stone because it's got an, a, a distinct crater. Um, like it looks like it fell from the sky because because it's there's this huge indentation um, that um, was was formed by buffalo who were ru rubbing against it um, um, like a long time ago and, and created this crater into the ground. Um, so it's it's it is a it is a geological marvel that we are not taking care of um, that has lots of historic roots um, that. That is a very cool feature in this in this uh, potential park we're looking to to create. Uh, we we put it in our in our, our our logo in our in our materials. Is that like it is a it is a very cool rock. Um, and and you know you, I've seen a lot of rocks. This one's really cool, but it is it is in desperate need of care and desperate need of 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 protection and and um and a park um designation is, is definitely what we're looking for to help help create that protection one of the things i found fascinating while i was on that tour with you was the the use of the area is so overwhelming i i was there were people walking their dogs or people riding their bikes or people just walking themselves like going out for a family walk it, it kind of is a unofficial park within, without being a park right now. Um, while we can go back and rehash what happened in 2004, uh, 2004 with when it was uh, uh, Mayor Bron Kanye and uh, a Council of the Rock uh, voting against it and everyone else voting for it, we are now in 2022, though. 2022 is a political entity in itself. Um, I'm assuming you have tried to reach out to your current counselor, Jasmine Meehan. You've tried to reach out to the mayor because as uh, uh, Andrew did mention, uh, the mayor, the 
chair or the president of the Northern Hills, if I'm not mistaken, is the name of the organization. Northern Hills was Jody Gondek, who is now, for anyone who has been paying attention and hasn't been living under a glacier or erratic or however you, Andrew wants to call it, um, she is now the mayor of Calgary. Um, what's been their comments to you? Have they been helping you try to figure out a solution? Because whether it be the communications part about uh, not being informed about what's happening, whether it be just sitting down and talking to you about the organization and trying to figure out what the best steps forward are, what's been the government's response from a municipal level? Um, yeah, so like we've we've kind of blindsided a lot of politicians. Um, we, we, yeah, I, I, I've, I've sent out sent out more pieces of mail this year than I have ever in my life. I like, I don't think I ever bought stamps before uh, this, this year and, and I've, I've gone through a ton of them. Um, but I, I have been receiving um, um, responses back. Um, I, the mayor's office uh, has reached out and, and um, they're, they're looking to connect me with the, the right um, administration uh, people to talk to, um, to get to get more um, information that I that I need as well, uh, I had a meeting with uh, Jasmine uh, Councillor Councillor Meehan um, last week, uh, and she was very intrigued with with everything that we're doing. And um, um, I, I, I think um, it I think that they've definitely caught off guard. Um, at, no, nobody wants to be the council that. Um, is anti-development, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying to frame it in a way that it's not anti-development, um, but it's pro-park, um, it's pro-green space. Um, and so uh, um, Councillor Meehan's office has been great. Um, uh, she, she just connected me with um, some of the administration to do with biodiversity and watershed. Um, so we'll be looking into getting some, some reports from them. Um, but yeah, it's it's the the it's it's interesting um, the the support I'm getting and and the support that that people are are, are willing to give, um, especially how how quickly this started. This only started at the beginning of July here, and um, and so it's it's been a whirlwind of 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 um, people reaching out to me and and, and supporting. So I, I'll 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 say that like I've had people like. Um, Jeremy Farkas, who's out doing his uh, Pacific Crest Trail, is is reaching out to me. He's very interested. He's been out in nature and and is very interested in what we're doing here uh, with with a, a nature park. Um, I've had Brian Pincott um, reach out to me, and and we've been having conversations because he's uh, before he was a councillor on City Council, he was also working on the watershed committees for Nose Creek, and uh, so he's been giving me a lot of cool information about. You know how they have done they have done stuff to improve the health of the creek and the health of the creek is terrible right now um but they have it's better than it was it's funny i was looking at a a uh, newspaper article from the 70s and it was mayor uh, rod sykes who called <laughs> called nose creek basically an open sewer um and so we've gone from open sewer to about 53% unhealthy. Um, so there, there is some improvement there. And um, so I'm, 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 I'm on this journey of, of knowledge of, of this creek and it's been a fun, um, it's been a fun ride. And so I, yeah, I appreciate all the support and I'm looking for more, like I'm looking for, um, so I've had lots of interactions with the city, but I'm looking for that, that uh, provincial champion. I'm looking for that uh, national champion, like who is going to, to to give us their political will to, to make this park happen. You, you talked earlier on about the four developments that are potentially going through Nose Creek. One of them is the feasibility study for a bike highway from Airdrie to Calgary. Have you been talking to outside Calgary politicians? Well, you need that champion on city council to take the idea and run with it. Like you said, that political will to do it. And we'll talk about a little bit about political will in a few minutes. But have you been reaching out to other government organizations, whether it be the provincial government federal government even your neighborings rocky mountain house or rocky mountain county and uh, the city of airdrie yeah so um definitely want to make um 
um, Calgary um, set the tone. Like that, that's we're we're definitely in the weeds with with the Calgary um, councilors and 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 all that. Um, but I have been um, have been seeing some support um, from some Airdrie councilors um, following some of our social pages. Um, uh, haven't haven't reached out yet with Rocky View County, but yeah, um, basically what I'm what I'm hearing from the province is um, that they're 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 looking for the city to take the lead and they're looking for the municipalities to take the lead on this because because there's so much developer land um, and like I my my go to uh, examples um, when when somebody says oh like it's it's all developer land you can't you can't do anything it's privately owned all this is like um, I go back to Fish Creek Park um, was developer land and it was Peter Lougheed's um, political will that just rammed that park through and and even even um, there was a ten year uh, ten year old plan to to have Deerfoot Trail go through Fish Creek and and Peter Lougheed said no we're not doing that um, we're 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 changing that plan a ten year old plan this the one that we're working with is a seventeen year old plan. Um, can we make changes? Like, can we have that that Peter Lougheed that comes in and says, no, this is what we should do with this land and it should be a park and the province is going to, to buy up the developer land. Um, so that was back in the seventies. And when um, um, when they did that, when the province did that, that, that freed up the city to focus solely on Nose Hill Park. Um, and Nose Hill had um, half half of their land was uh, was was developer land and so the city uh went in and bought about 1300 acres of developer land of private land to make nose hill park um and so and so when i do hear you know a, a politician or somebody say ah there's not much we can do it's 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 developer land or it's 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 a city issue or it's like there is precedence for you to step in and do something about this. And I mean, this, this is the time to do it and let's, let's try and try and make it happen. Why don't you think people are getting on board? Why don't you think the, there is political will in uh, today's society or in on the council right now? And I'm not trying to put you on the spot here because uh, I, I try not to do the gotcha questions, but I, I want to know what's stopping someone from actually saying, you know what? Let's do this. Let's get this up. Have you ha heard rumblings? Are there people talking in the backgrounds? Is there things going on that like the general public is not aware of of what's happening with this parcel of land? Because like you said, the lack of communication to me, as a, a former municipal employee, not for the city of Calgary, I know planning and development, you have to go knock on every single door and you have to basically hand them a letter. And I don't think a sign cuts it. What do you think the political will is why is there a political will lacking here to jump on board and save such a historic site? And I say that, and I say that within my own words, for those listening, for those watching, do not think that I'm saying this for Andrew's sake. This is me saying it. This is, to me, this would be a historical site. This is part of our heritage. This is why Calgary is Calgary today because of this Creek. And I'm not saying just because of this Creek, I'm saying this was the reason why Calgary became not just a fort. <laughs> Yeah, I, you know, it's, it, it definitely just, um, like, I, I realize the, 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 um, the resistance to be that, that anti-development, um, um, council. But with, and, and with a like, climate emergency that they just passed, do you think they'd be jumping on that? Do you, you do not agree? Or are, are you just looking at it as more of a, they don't want to seem anti-development because there's a lot of people still moving to the city. I mean, the, the, the one thing that, that I've, I've heard is, is um, Calgary has lots of land. Um, and and I, I believe that there are better parcels of land um, that, that are more suitable for, for light industrial or, um, and, and is there ways that um, you, could, you could swap the land or is there ways that you can, you can negotiate with the, the, the development um, group? And, like there has to be um, pro-development ways of navigating this and protecting uh, exactly the climate. So, so the the city council um, declared a climate emergency. Like, 
green space is a huge part of, of protecting our climate and, and um, a, 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 a sea of pavement and, and gray warehouses can't, can't be great for that valley. Um, I, I, I go down there every day. I, I see, I've seen more birds than I have ever seen in Calgary in my life. The, the, the wetlands, the, the, we have a blue heron down there that, that like, I've never seen that huge a bird in our, in our, in our city. And um, because I live in the, in the Northern Hills, <laughs> if I don't go down into the, into the valley, it's just, it's just roads, it's mini highways. Um, so, so this green space definitely, like it, it ticks a lot of boxes. It's, it's a climate emergency um, response. It's a, um, it's a truth and reconcili reconciliation response. Um, it is, it is like I, what I'm view, what I'm finding in this valley is, is like if you look at Fish Creek being the, the. Um, the homestead or the settler history park, like you see all, all the, the buildings that they have um, protected down in Fish Creek. I see the, the Nose Creek as very much First Nations um, um, history and, and, and we're just wanting to put up a bunch of, of warehouses uh, over top of it rather than protecting it the way we do um, our other, other historical sites. So one uh, of the big... Sorry, one of the big things that uh, I, I noticed while I was on uh, going through Nose Creek was it's not a area that you could put residential. Maybe you could put like uh, industrial, but the 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 comeback that some people might have is there's a train track running through that that area and it is not accessible for the people of Coventry Hills to unless you jump the track and because there are areas where the fence is down and you can walk across which FYI we did so if you want to send your nasty letters to me do it to me I, I appreciate it but this is also CP land right this is CN land this is CP land um Will you be trying to reach out to them to say, let's work together because you want to try to also look like you're being environmentally friendly and this area is part of where you drive through almost on a regular basis? Yeah, definitely. And that's, that comes back to these projects that are, that are, being, um, that are being in various stages of development. It's like um, the, the, the widening of, of Country Hills Boulevard. Um, that is a huge opportunity to create better access to the Nose Creek, so that people, yeah, don't don't use the um, the makeshift crossings that people have been making, um, um, and they're actually using the proper um, uh, accessible ac accessible access. Um, so the there's there's those projects that are going on. I I, I do. I definitely, we need to reach out to, to CP Rail and, and find some some good solutions to 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 the access to the park. Um, but but regardless, like you, you saw, it, we were down there. Like people will go down there. It, as far as like um, accessibility, it is terrible. Like there there is, I showed you. There's a there is a small stormwater um, park. If you want to call it a park, it's it's got a gravel pathway it's got a bridge i showed you the bridge um fyi so best bridge i've ever seen that goes over absolutely nothing but it's there people it's there. It's, it's, so it was like an attempt at here here you go nose hill or, or northern northern hills um here's here's your park but there's no sidewalk to get to that like you have to walk on the edge of, of country hills boulevard since the 1980s um to to get to this little um little little park parkette um that that um that they've created and, and so it's like yeah like and and my my feeling is the reason they haven't put sidewalks and the reason they haven't done any of this this development is because they're waiting for the development they're waiting for these warehouses to come in to make make the accessible solutions and and i feel like that's that's backward like i i feel like the the creek that should be the priority. The creek and its riparian um, uh, um, setbacks, like that's the, the the important part. That should be the focal part of, of of all development that's going on down there. Like um, 
the the health of that creek should be number one uh, and everything else should be kind of orbiting it well we talked you talked about setbacks and i want to talk about that for a second currently under the proposed development plan uh there's a hundred foot 100 meter i think 100 foot you might be able to correct me on it setback from the creek river bend um that doesn't seem like a lot for a waterway that's just me and that's just me saying that um what's a win for you like a win for you would be it to be turned into a park understandable but you always have what your number one win is and then your second place and then your third place so right now let's go in reverse order what's your third place win here is it to get the setback even further back than that hundred or what would be a win for you yeah, it was a it was a suggestion. Uh, I'm on a few different advocacy groups, and it was Jeff Binks um, from LRT on the Green uh, that suggested to me, "Hey, you should see if you can move the setbacks um, further back." Because looking at um, a document from the 1984, which um, is basically deciding our setbacks for now until eternity, um, Nose Creek and Nose, uh, the West Nose Creek um, are only 100 feet. You can develop up to 100 feet uh, of, of the creek, which is really not a lot. But the funny thing is Bow River, you could, it's their setback is 200 feet, which is crazy for a river that size, like only 200, you can develop up to 200 feet of the river. So uh, my suggestion um, to council and to, to my counselor, um, Mian was to um, let's increase that. Let's let's all, all across Calgary, you should you should increase it to 300 feet. Let's <laughs> let's let's not get crazy. Let's just try it. Let's let's try and go a little further to protect our waterways because it like it is essential for these um, these wetlands and the, the ecosystems that we are we are trying to protect or trying uh, like a saying we're trying to protect um it's definitely um uh it's it is a small step but hey um we'll see what we can go what, what we can do um counselor mian was was intrigued by that she's she said she would look into it um and she's also the reason she's getting me connected with biodiversity team and the and the wetlands team is to to, to see what else um, we can we can look at um, and 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 the reports that I'm looking at when I when I talk about um, uh, the health of, of Nose Creek being 53% unhealthy um, that's from the Nose Creek um, um, watershed partnership report from 2018 um, so I'm like also looking are there updated reports um, is there is there something um, more recent that I can look at um because is that's there, sorry is there wildlife is there actual fish inhabitants in the creek um there are trout um is is what i've read um different species of trout um probably not very healthy trout um, <laughs> it's, um like like i said 53 percent healthy so it's like um 53 percent unhealthy five percent healthy and then everything else is uh, unhealthy or it's healthy with problems is the is the other other category healthy with problems okay healthy with pro okay that's me that's me i'm healthy with problems um, are, aren't we all aren't we all andrew aren't we all? <laughs> um, um, so you at the end of the day, what you're looking for, what the organization is set up to do is not only save Nose Creek, but turn it into a park. Is that what I'm getting at at the end of the day? Because it seems like a hard road to climb. And you're, you're a politically minded guy. I follow you on Twitter. You seem to be engaged in politics. Seeing how the sausage is made is one thing. Being a political observer is another. You're seeing how the sausage is made now. You're seeing how democracy works. You talk to your politicians, they put you off onto another organization, or you talk to one level, they say, well, it's this level of government. Does this turn you off on politics? Because there's a lot of people who are in the same boat as you right now, and they are saying, well, I have my, my thing that I want to champion, but I don't know where to start. Since you've just started, has it been a daunting task to get through the 
and I, I hate to use this uh, uh, word here, but have, has it has been hard to navigate the red tape, the gatekeepers of democracy? Um, I guess I think it's like for me, it's going to be um, I, I, it, it's it's going to be a wild ride. I mean, either we're successful or we're not. We're going to fail miserably. And uh, and hey, we're, the, the worst thing that could happen is what's already going to happen is is the uh, is the warehouses. So any anything above that, I've got to take as a win because we're we're doing our best. And um, I, I mean. It, it is frustrating uh, like it, it is fun it's frustrating but i just laugh at it it's like you, you know passing the buck on onto a different level of government it's like um it, it it's really it's kind of a challenge for me it's like how do i make this your problem how do i make this um really um um be nagging on your what 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 matters most to you um, like that's what I love about advocacy. I, I I don't think I could ever do what what our counselors and 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 our politicians do because like the advocacy part of it is like you know what I'm I'm trying I'm doing my best here I'm gonna I'm gonna see what good I can do um, and uh, you know if 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 it, I don't really have any repercussions to that. I'm just trying to help. <laughs> and, and I can see, I can see how it's, it's a, it's a tightrope walk for politicians to, to, to support something like this is like, there's, there's two sides to the story. So it's like, um, whose side do, do they take? And um, I, I guess I, I'm just trying to, to convince them that that's, that it's, there's, there's more layers to it than that. Like it, it doesn't have to be two sides. It can be, it's like, how do we work together? How do we get everybody to, to the table? Like back in the 70s, they had the, the Fish Creek um, Advisory Council, which was part part city employees, part provincial employees. It's like, let's let's get that going here in, in, in the Nose Creek. Let's let's find a, a middle ground that that we can we can find. Uh, but let's work together and, and let's let's make it happen. And it seems like people are working together. Well, within the Coventry Hills area, you, you talked about your organization and it seems to be spawning more and more each day and it seems to be getting its traction. You seem to be getting the in the media. Um, what's the, on the future for the organization? While you're not done advocating, you're not done fighting, um, what's the next steps? I know you have tours coming on, but what is the next steps for the Save Nose Creek? Yeah, we are. We are definitely um, uh, the next step. So we, there was the, the today was the uh, the planning commission where um, there's a there's a parcel of land that kind of intersects the the Nose Creek, and so the next steps would be now that it's it's past the planning commission and it's going to go to council in September. It's like I want to be on every single councilor's radar. Like I, I want them to know what we're trying to do down here. Um, so it'll be a lot of engagement with them. Um, we've got uh, uh, we're we're trying to put together a tour for the um, Siksika Nation um, and and talking with them because I really need their perspective on this. Um, I mean, this is their history, and and I want to be respectful of, of that and 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 see if if our 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 interests align and, and see how we can partner in, in that way. So um, want to do that. Um, but ultimately, yeah, our, our primary goal is a, uh, a provincial park. Um, and so I do need, I do need a provincial champion. Um, and I'm, I'm pushing, I've, I, I've sent out letters. I'm, I'm trying to get that, that MLA or that, uh, I mean, Jason Kenny, hey, he's on his way out the door. Let's, uh, let's rubber stamp a park on your way out. Like, I, I'll, I'll take that as a win. I mean, that's, that's, that's the type of, that's the type of, of, of I mean, it, that will cause its own controversy, but, but still, I, I'm just looking for, <laughs> I'm just looking for that, that MLA um, or that MP, like, like, I'm looking at national park um, criteria, and there's there's definitely a case to be made that Nose Creek falls into to national park territory as well. Um, does does the does Justin Trudeau want to want to want to do something in Calgary and Airdrie and like like does does that does that interest him? And um, but again, I I I have to navigate the well. This is a 
this is a municipal issue. It's like, no, let, let's make, how do we make it your issue? Like, <laughs> how do I, how do I make this important to you? And, and let's talk about that. I'm, I, I, like I say, I'm always willing to give a tour to anybody. Uh, I've got lots of sunscreen and uh, mosquito spray um, and we can go off and, and go for a tour. Cause I think when you get down and see it, you see how, how, um, how great it is. Um, and and I, like, that's the thing It's kind of tucked away here in Calgary that nobody really sees it. So let's, let's amplify it. And that, that's what we've been doing through our social media and, and, and trying to, to show people what, what we could be losing if it just becomes a gray sea of warehouses. We have talked about a lot of things over the last 50 minutes. And I want to leave on this question, and this is the point of time when I'm turning it over to you, and this is your time to give the pitch, right? The elevator pitch, the, while you don't want to be in politics, you're about to be in politics with this. What do you want people to know about this project that we haven't talked about yet, that you need to make sure that people understand that we haven't touched on? Um, ultimately, um, I, I, I believe that the Nose Creek is essential for our city. Um, and, and I want Calgary and the area councillors, and uh, I want them to be the champions of this project because we need to show the rest of the municipalities how important this creek is. Because unless we, and we, unless we pave the way for this provincial park as, as, as Calgary um, uh, in, this, in, this, in this area, like, the, the other municipalities won't have any buy-in to this. And so uh, I, want, I want Calgarians to reach out to your counselor and tell them you're, you want a provincial park and it starts with the municipalities and, and, and making sure that we can pave a way for this provincial park. I, I, want, I want Calgarians to reach out to their provincial um, leadership and say, hey, I want a provincial park. To, to protect the history, to protect the uh, biodiversity. The, the creek itself needs, needs love and care to improve um, and, and, and reach out to your MPs and say, this Nose Creek Valley needs protection. It needs protection to, um, to make sure that, that, that future generations can still look at a hundred years of Nose Creek history and, 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 and not just be looking at pavement, not just be looking at something that we, we just paved over. And, and, and so I'm, I'm really hopeful we can continue the, the momentum of gaining support for this project. And it really comes down to, to more voices. I need more um, citizens in Calgary to be uh, aware of this. So sharing with um, your friends and family in Calgary, getting on the radar of every Calgarian is, is, is one of my goals this year is like, oh, we want Save Nose Creek to be a household name so that um, when it comes up, when, when, it, when people see it on the news, they are like, oh, I, I know about that. And, and yeah, this is, a good, this is a good cause to support. So that's, that's really what I'm asking for from, from, from people right now. And, and uh, yeah, just amplify this story and keep it, keep it on the radar so it becomes a problem for the people that have the power to do something. Um, so in order to do that, in order to learn more, to share information that Save Nose Creek is putting out, how can they do that? How the, can they reach out, get involved with the organization, get involved and help you out, whether it be advocacy, whether it be just sharing with their friends, how can they do that? Yeah, so we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram, we're on LinkedIn, and we are on TikTok. So there's multiple ways that you can just DM and, 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 and talk to us. Um, um, I, I'm, I'm always, I'm, I'm seeing tons of people reaching out and saying, how can I help? And when are you going to do a, an event? And, and, and so we're, 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 we're thinking about that as well. It's like when we enter uh, the fall with the new, new sitting of, of, of city council, it's like, how do we continue to raise the bar and, and, and amplify our, our, what we're trying to do so that every single counselor knows what, what Save Nose Creek is about. Every single counselor has to say something about it. 
um, when they're when they're talking to their constituents. So let's 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 get there. So for those who are watching and listening, I just want to let you know uh, the links to the Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, not TikTok, because I don't believe in it, uh, are in the show notes. Please check them out. If you are in Coventry Hills or in the Northeast in uh, that area, please follow along. This is a uh, area that needs to be saved. And I, I've only got seen it once in my life. I didn't know about it before I got the tour from Andrew. And I would highly recommend anyone who is interested in learning more, please reach out to Andrew because you will you will walk away thinking you were dumb and now you are much dumber because this man knows a lot more about this area than most people probably will in their lifetime. So Andrew, I want to thank you so much for doing this. This was a honor and a pleasure. And I hope even I if I can reach one counselor and change their mind with this interview, I hope I've done that. So thank you so much. No, thank you. I appreciate it, Chris. Um, so with that, I want to remind everyone, uh, this has been the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. Have yourself an excellent day. And remember, get out from behind social media for at least five minutes a day and go have a conversation with somebody. It helps our society. It helps our democracy. And it just makes us a better god dang people. So with that, have yourself an excellent day. And remember, keep talking. <laughs>